Tonight, in light of a recent case in which a homeowner wounded a man he believed to be an intruder, we're taking a closer look at the self-defense law in Texas. An inmate death reported at the Bear County Jail. This is a systemic issue. We've got to find a better way of dealing with our homeless population, of dealing with our mentally ill population. And protesters making a last ditch effort to stop the relocation of the cenotaph in Alamo Plaza. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 tonight from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A shooting left the San Antonio police with an open and ongoing investigation earlier this month. A homeowner told police that he fired three warning shots after seeing a man outside his back door. One of those shots hit that man. Although he says he was protecting his home, the question remains whether he will be charged with a crime in this case. In Texas, you are allowed to defend your own home or property. You're also allowed to use self to use force rather in self-defense. But in most cases, you're not allowed to shoot warning shots. As Japhanie Gray reports, this makes this one a complicated case. <laughs> The time, 2.30 a.m., December 16th, at a home on Warren Street just north of downtown. San Antonio police say a homeowner woke up to his dog barking and saw a man he didn't know outside his back door. A police report states the homeowner got his gun and told the man to leave, and when he refused, the homeowner fired warning shots. Two warning shots in the air, but the third warning shot aimed at the ground, causing the bullet to ricochet and hit the man in the shin. Texas law says that you can use deadly force to protect your land or property in some cases. This could be to prevent arson, burglary, or other crimes. And if the person believes that that property can't be protected or recovered by any means. But if you fire warning shots, it could be considered disorderly or deadly conduct. Under Texas law, recklessly discharging a gun in a public place other than a shooting range is against the law. It's also against the law to recklessly fire a gun on private or public property within cities that have a population of 100,000 or more. If you encounter someone trespassing on your property, the best thing to do is to call police. But if you feel like your life is in danger and you're acting in self-defense, Texas law could protect you. For The Nine, I'm Jaffney Gray. Again, San Antonio police have not said whether the homeowner will be charged with a crime. If he is, it will ultimately be up to the district attorney's office to decide whether they will proceed with the case. A man facing a criminal trespassing charge has died in the Bear County Jail. Stephen Wayne Cole was arrested on Sunday at a Walmart. His bond was set at $400, meaning that he only needed to pay 40 to get out of jail. In theory, for 40 bucks, this gentleman could have gotten himself out of jail. But when you're homeless, 40 bucks may as well be a 40 million bucks. You just don't have it. And so I just, there's got to be a better way to, to, to handle this situation. Cole is at least the third person to die at the Bear County Jail in the last year after being arrested on a criminal trespassing charge and being unable to post a bond of less than $100. Sheriff Javier Salazar says they believe Cole died of natural causes. He also says Cole was in bad health and used drugs. The sheriff added that he believes this instance points to a systemic issue. We should have had a find, found a better way to get him out of jail. Uh, and my understanding is there was a process in the works. He was he was uh, he was a candidate for a PR bond, but unfortunately in this instance it just didn't happen quick enough. A PR bond or personal recognizance bond typically given to people who cannot afford to pay bail as long as they've undergone a risk assessment and promise to show up for their court appearances. A judge has to approve these types of bonds. A father rushes into a burning building to save his children and it ends in tragedy. A man who made it his mission to honor every victim of a mass shooting across the country has now retired and a local man accused of assaulting an officer. Here's tonight's 9 at 9. A plane carrying 98 people crashes in Kazakhstan. At least 12 passengers were killed. The plane went down just seconds after takeoff, plowing through a concrete fence and into a two-story building. We don't yet know what caused that crash. Just two days after Christmas, a California family is mourning the deaths of three family members. A father and his four and 12 year old daughters died in an early morning apartment fire. Police say the man went back into the burning building to try to save his children. It's a terrible situation. Uh, it, you know, as, as a father myself, going back in would be something that 
I think a lot of us would probably think about doing and would end up doing. And unfortunately, it, it didn't work out in this case. Three other family members were in the apartment at the time. An eight-year-old boy was airlifted to a hospital in grave condition. Search crews in Hawaii have found the crash site of a helicopter on Kauai that failed to return after a tour off the coast. Crews are now looking for any possible survivors. A pilot and six passengers were on board. It was reported missing Thursday night. A carpenter who built more than 27,000 crosses to honor gun violence victims in the U.S. has retired. For two decades, Greg Zonis has been traveling all over the country to place crosses at the sites of mass shootings. In fact, KSAP 12 interviewed him in 2017 after the Sutherland Springs shooting and again in 2019 after the shooting in El Paso. This year, Zonis felt especially impacted when a shooting happened in his hometown of Aurora, Illinois. I don't know how to cope with it anymore. And it's multiplied and multiplied and multiplied until it happened in my town. Zonis says he is worn out, but he will hand over his work to Lutheran Charities. Here at home. A holiday family gathering coming to an end with a police officer getting hit in the head and the man officers say is responsible in jail. Police were called to a home on Christmas night after a woman accused Abel Rivetta of fondling her 19 year old daughter. On the scene of the arrest, police told me that they tried to talk Rivera down, but he was too intoxicated. So eventually they just had to go in and try to apprehend him. Rivetta has been formally charged with assault of a peace officer causing bodily injury. Federal law enforcement officers are warning people that large gatherings continue to be attractive targets for people wishing to carry out violent attacks. In New York, police officers are already working on security measures for next week's New Year's Eve celebration in Times Square. We currently have no specific credible threats directed toward any of our events. Still, I'm going to ask that members of the public, as always, remain vigilant. Scientists puzzled by the behavior of what used to be one of the brightest stars in the skies. The red giant star, called Betelgeuse, has been rapidly dimming since October. Scientists believe that could be a prelude to its explosion, but it's anyone's guess when that would happen. Some scientists believe it could still be more than 200,000 years away. There's a push to get Target to get rid of plastic bags for good. A change.org petition has collected more than 459,000 signatures. According to the movement, Target's plastic bags are choking the earth. Target says it's been working for solutions that are environmentally friendly. A lucky Michigan woman was Bill Gates' secret Santa. She received an 81 pound box from the billionaire after opting into an online gift exchange. Among the items in that box, the Great Gatsby Manuscript. Gates even made a donation to the American Heart Association in honor of the woman's late mother. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. How about that for a name draw? I, I know, you want to talk about <laughs> luck? Jeez Louise, yeah. <laughs> Katie Blake is with us tonight to talk about this weekend forecast. A lot of people mm -hmm. still enjoying some time off, friends yeah. and family, Definitely. a lot of things still going on. Yeah, it's going to probably be a busy weekend. It's Saturday and Sunday are going to be very different days. Saturday a lot more like what we saw today, but Sunday is going to be beautiful. So if you need to get outside, enjoy, you know, last few days with family, Sunday is going to be the better day of the upcoming weekend. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about fog. We had some fog roll in very early this morning. Here we are at 6 a.m. This is when some of the fog started to roll into the Alamo City, as you can see here on our Almanac uh, at our time lapse here. Look, seven o'clock. So just an hour later, very foggy, overcast start to the day today. But it was pretty quickly uh, that this fog lifted, and we actually got to see some blue sky and sunshine as we went into the afternoon hours. But the fog we saw this morning was nothing compared to what happened up in the Texas Panhandle today. You may have seen this video already. This is out of Lubbock earlier today. Look at this 18 wheeler. Visibility was so bad that tractor trailer could not see that traffic was stopped, so it was swerving to try to get out of the way and unfortunately caused this horrible uh, collision. I do believe one person was injured there, but what a horrific crash. And this is just an example of how low visibility can get in very dense fog. And that's what they were dealing with up in the Texas Panhandle um, earlier today. And actually visibility is still very, very low up in the Panhandle as we speak down to zero mile visibility still from Lubbock all the way up into Amarillo. Elsewhere across Texas, things are okay. We're looking good here. In 
and San Antonio and South Texas, but not out of the question that some fog could develop late tonight through early tomorrow morning. The reason they saw such dense fog up in the panhandle, their dew points are pretty elevated in the 40s there. Those are some high numbers for them. We're used to seeing pretty high dew points here in South Texas because we're so close to the coast, but they've had a south wind in place. Uh, below this warm front that has moved through Texas. So the whole state has a big south wind in place, allowing a lot of moisture to fill in. And so they're very saturated up in the panhandle, and that's why that fog has uh, really stuck around through a good portion of the day today. But things are about to change for them and also for a good portion of Texas here. We've got a low pressure system spinning coming off of the Rockies tonight, associated cold front, uh, some storms developing along that cold front now and uh, through overnight and the day tomorrow, we'll see this cold front progress off to the east. A lot of the very active weather associated with this low pressure system is going to stay off to our north. Things get get really gnarly. The strongest storms are generally closer to the center of this surface low pressure system. That's going to be well off to our north through the day tomorrow. So we're on the tail end of things, which basically means we don't have to worry about any strong to severe storms, which is good. But this also means even our chances of showers are pretty low. We're just looking at about a 20% chance of an isolated shower late tomorrow afternoon through the evening hours. By the time we get to 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow, that frontal boundary will be off to our east, taking chances of rain with it. Skies will start to clear out by late Saturday. Saturday evening and by the time we get to Sunday that front is well to the east. The rain is gone as well and we will clear out really nicely for Sunday. So tomorrow cloudy, muggy, a little bit warmer, 20% chance of a shower, but plan on staying rain free and on Sunday a really, really nice day. Myra 63, so we'll cool down a little bit. Humidity will drop. Sunday is going to end up being a great day, but the question still remains. What about New Year's Eve? Ah, yes, big things coming up yes. next week. We'll talk about that in a bit. Lots of plans in place. Yes, thanks Katie. Mm -hmm. Right now on our digital platforms, just days away from 2020, we are taking a look back at some of the biggest moments of 2019. KSAT News and 9 put together a year in review show from the crime stories that shocked so much of the city to the biggest political controversies. And of course, the stories that were just plain weird. The whole show is now available on demand on KSAT.com through the KSAT mobile app and on our streaming app available on Roku or any smart TV device. You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. This SA Salute Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Broadway Bank. Hello, I have uh, Major Arturo Rodriguez uh, with the uh, First Armor Division. I am deployed here in Afghanistan. I wanted to wish uh, Happy Holidays and a Merry Christmas to all my family and friends in the San Antonio area, uh, specifically Pierce on Cotulo, Texas. Mom and Dad, Arturo and Naldo Rodriguez, I miss you guys. Love you guys very much. I wish I could be home for the holidays. I'll see you guys soon. A protest today in Alamo Plaza is the latest move in the battle over the cenotaph. Dozens of demonstrators gathered around the monument today to protest it being moved. The City Council and the City's Historic and Design Review Commission already approved the relocation of the cenotaph to a few hundred feet from where it is now. It's right in front of the Alamo currently. This is all part of a larger plan to redesign Alamo Plaza. The monument is covered with the names of Alamo defenders. It stands as an empty tomb for those who died. It was funded by the state in 1936, 100 years after the Texas Revolution. Protesters today believed the process of moving the monument would start overnight, but they told us that date has changed. And we'll defend our Alamo defenders. And if they bring cranes out here, 
We're not scared of going to jail. We'll step in the way of it. We could not confirm the date of that moving of the uh, cenotaph today. Leading this protest, though, is a group called This Is Texas Freedom Force. The group organized today's demonstration. They say they're concerned that moving the cenotaph could damage it. Phase one of the Alamo Plaza redesign will begin with the street closures that's happening in late January of next year. Turning to tonight's top stories, footage obtained by the New York Times shows Navy SEALs calling platoon leader Eddie Gallagher evil and toxic. The leaked video also shows the SEALs describing Gallagher as someone, quote, perfectly OK with killing anybody that was moving, end quote. Gallagher was accused of war crimes in Iraq after his platoon turned him in. He was later acquitted of most charges except for one count of posing with a dead militant. He's since retired from the Navy. Dozens more Americans have died from the flu. The CDC says an estimated 2100 people have died from the virus this flu season. About 300 of those deaths happened within the past week. The CDC also says there have now been 22 pediatric flu deaths so far. Flu activity is higher than normal for this time of year. January 2nd could be the biggest day ever for holiday gift returns. Several shipping companies have dubbed it National Returns Day. UPS expects a record 1.9 million packages to be returned next Thursday. That's a 26% increase from a year earlier. And that prediction is just for UPS. It doesn't include packages sent through po the Postal Service or through FedEx. Katie Blake is back with us to talk about the all important holiday coming up next yes. New Year's Eve. So many plans or <laughs> maybe making last minute plans. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed maybe. to do that this evening and I didn't. Yeah, find a restaurant I think or somewhere. My plans will be home. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember two years ago, the New Year's Eve? When yes. We were celebrating it the tricentennial. For rigid, frigid. Brutal. Yeah, it's not going to be like that this year. All right, good. It's actually shaping up to be pretty good for New Year's Eve. We will see a big increase in cloud cover after beautiful sunny days Sunday and Monday. Looks like clouds come pouring back in on Tuesday for New Year's Eve, but rain should hold off until early in the day Wednesday. New Year's Day. We will have another low pressure system moving in from the West Coast. This one looks to stay a bit farther south, helping us out with rain chances a bit more than the system that will be coming through during the day tomorrow. So I do want to show you 12 a.m. Wednesday. Happy New Year 2020 begins. Rain is still off to our south and to our west, but as that upper level low inches closer to us Wednesday and even into Thursday, we will start to bring in chances of some scattered showers for us here in South Texas. And so it looks like rain on Wednesday, but also lingering into Thursday as that upper level low pressure system kind of meanders over South Texas. Just how quickly we clear out Wednesday into Thursday that kind of remains to be seen. We'll be watching that low over the next couple of days and we'll be continuing to tweak the forecast forecast, but it does look good for New Year's Eve dry for fireworks time with showers uh, moving in Wednesday. The clouds and the rain will really keep us cooler as well with temperatures limited to the 50s. Before we get there, though, don't forget about that front that swings through tomorrow. Beautiful Sunday into Monday before we celebrate the starts of 2020. All right, thanks, Katie. Here at home, SAISD is honoring fallen officer Cliff Martinez with a new scholarship. Today, the district announced the Cliff Martinez Memorial Scholarship for students who want to become a police officer. Martinez worked with the SAISD Police Department for 28 years. He was killed last Saturday while working off duty as a security guard at a Southeast Side IHOP. A fight inside the restaurant spilled out into the parking lot. Police say two men assaulted Martinez before allegedly getting into a car and intentionally running him over. Alfredo Martinez and Jorge Lopez are now charged with capital murder in this case. <laughs> A holiday break this week for many, but certainly no break when it comes to headline making news this week. From a tragedy on Christmas Day to the search for remains after police say a woman lied about having a miscarriage. Here's the week in 210. 
A pregnant mother shot and killed by the father of her children on Christmas Day. Police say Gabriela Rodriguez was dropping off her two kids when it happened. Her ex then turned the gun on himself. He's still in the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Rodriguez's mother says both of the victim's sons were nearby when it happened, and the oldest saw everything. But she says he doesn't entirely understand what happened. He believes his mom is coming home and his daddy's going to behave and come home and everybody's going to be friends again. A woman arrested and accused of lying about having a miscarriage. Now investigators are searching for the missing fetus. Just when you think in law enforcement that you've heard it all, a uh, case like this one comes along. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says Victoria Ochoa showed up at Southwest General Hospital claiming she'd had a miscarriage in a toilet, panicked and then flushed the remains. But doctors examined the placenta and umbilical cord and determined her story did not add up. They say the baby would have been close to full term. That baby would have been way too big to be flushed in, in, that, in that condition. Ochoa is charged with altering, destroying, or concealing a human corpse. A man shot and killed by police after a dramatic chain of events. It all started with a call for a stolen vehicle. The owner was tracking the car with an iPad that was left inside it. At one point, the suspect got out of the car and left in another blue car. He eventually crashed and ran off. When officers confronted the man, they say he was holding a weapon. At some point, they say he tried to switch hands. That's when he was shot by four police officers. They've been placed on administrative duty. A son will soon be presented with his father's long-lost Purple Heart Medal. The owner of an auction house discovered Corporal John D. Cook's Purple Heart in a box locked away in an abandoned storage unit. He was able to track down his son using Ancestry.com. Corporal Cook's son will be in San Antonio on Monday to accept his father's medal. The Week in 210, just one of the series that we feature exclusively here on the News at 9. Here's a look at our lineup. Be sure to tune in on Monday for some life advice and an all-new adulting hack. Let's find out what is trending on our website this evening, ksat.com with Ivan Herrera. Myra, thank you for having me. Welcome back. Thank Happy you, Christmas. Thank you. Yes. All right. Getting back in the swing of things. Yes. And Dusting off the sugar. Yes. Yes. And Oof, speaking so of sugar, sugar, I do have a trending story for you that has some sugar in it. Okay. So. Well, I mean, the holidays technically yeah. aren't totally over. So exactly. We can have some more sugar. Perfect timing. <laughs> Yes, okay. so it's actually my first story. Uh, three great training stories for you today, but the first one, free coffee is always something I can get behind. Aww. So Starbucks is doing just that with their new pop-up parties. So oh. these are gonna be happening from now, well, it's a little bit too late for this one, but from now until December 31st, from one to 2 p.m., if you go to Starbucks pop-up, uh, what is it? Starbuckspopup.com. Um, you check which stores near you are maybe doing, participating in there. You go to the store and you get a free tall espresso beverage. Ah, hot okay. Or iced. So these are at actual Starbucks, Starbucks stores. locations. Yes, you have to go. The event is just a pop up yes, within the Starbucks. Yes, and it's not every single Starbucks near you, so you have to go to that website, starbuckspopup.com. You check it out, yeah. see which one, and then one to two, you got to get over there. Okay. And and the cool thing is that it also includes a holiday drinks, which is like the sweetest ones, course, the best right? ones. Yes, and I love the chestnut praline. If you're not about oh, it, I haven't had it. I'm not about you now. Just <laughs> uh, Christmas Day was even more memorable, as it always is, but even more memorable for this one family who fought a fire in their PJs. I saw this. Yes, it was hilarious. But um, Texas mother said her 12-year-old son basically got a magnifying glass for Christmas and he was trying to light some papers on fire and he succeeded. But he was he also, overly successful. <laughs> also set the lawn on fire. So basically everybody was called <laughs> out and they're like, hey, uh, we got to put out this fire. They grabbed some buckets of water. They turned on the sprinklers and they grabbed some blankets, smothered the fire out. Nobody was hurt. But all in all, it made for a hilarious video. Because afterward. they're all in their matching, matching plaid PJs, yes, Christmas yes. PJs. So once the flames were out, they all had a big laugh about it. But oh. the mother did warn other parents: if you're going to give away a magnifying glass, maybe expect something like this. Just yes. make sure your kid so, doesn't set anything exactly. on fire. So check out that story on kz.com. <laughs> that's, that's pretty hilarious. We also have the video, so check that out too. Oh, that's funny. All right, last up, the most satisfying movies and TV of 2019. Ooh. Can you believe it? It's already 2020. Like, yeah, we're so almost. close. What's today? The 27th, so just three or four Couple more days. days. Yes, it's 
sad, but <laughs> true. So this year we saw a lot of series finales. We saw Jane the Virgin series finale. We saw the Big Bang Theory yeah, ending. And one. both of those were filled with warmth and heart. And I, I didn't keep up with Big Bang, but I did keep up with Jane the Virgin. And they were just really good endings overall. Genuine, awesome. Sad to see them finish, but they had to go. All good things, yes. as they say. Yes, all good things must come to an end. All right, so for blockbusters, we had the Avengers, the fourth installment, which, which was Endgame, and then we had Toy Story 4. So oh, both of those were the right. yes fourth installments of their franchises okay. together. So a lot of people were saying that they had a lot of emotion, a lot of excitement, and definitely genuine endings, because Toy Story 4, it was already kind of a wrap up. There was just too many okay. already. Yeah. So Avengers, that wasn't one that left people going, ah, oh, there's gonna be a fifth? There might be. Might be. We'll see. Check all those uh, videos out on KSAT.com. All those stories are there on the homepage. All right, page. so if you are looking for something to catch up on, maybe you can go yeah. stream some the, of these. Something find, new for you. Find them somewhere. Yes. Thank you for having me, Myra. All right, thanks, Ivan. We'll be right back. Thanks so much for watching KSAT News at 9 tonight. I'm Myra Arthur. Have a great night. We'll see you right back here next week.